Okay, everybody here. I'm here talking to Martin Callender, who took some time out of his busy day to talk to us about his upcoming game, Big Boy Boxing, a boss rush um, game, boxing game, uh, where you and your coach Hank take on a cast of boxers as you slowly rise to the top as a big champion. Um, Martin, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that about a good description of this game? Yeah. That is a great description, yes. It's, uh, we took um, uh, a lot of inspirations from old retro games like uh, Punch-Out! Uh, and also some, some new indie star hits like, uh, like Cuphead. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of um, uh, the inspirations behind Big Boy Boxing. So what makes it... This is the thing that you promote it with. It's a boss rush game. So what makes that in your opinion, a boss rush game as opposed to just different levels that you're moving through? Yeah, so the thing with all the bosses is like they they have this very unique, iconic, you know, both mechanic but also kind of um, um, style to them. And uh, obviously like it's because it's a boxing game, it's like, you know, one, one person at a time. So it, so it kind of inherently feels like a boss boss type game. Um, so yeah, there's there's uh, basically no fluff in between. There's just you know we got a boss and then we got the next boss, and it's you know new mechanics, new new things um, to to experience. Okay, so you're really basing that on like the difficulty levels and sort of the challenges right away as opposed to in between easier enemies to kind of warm you up. You go straight into the game. Uh, but I assume the bosses progressively do get more difficult as well, or does it just depend on their techniques? Yeah, like, um, they, of course, like, they all get more and more difficult. Um, but not necessarily does that mean that, you know, you'll fail more and more. It could also be a bit of the other way around, where, um, it it takes some time to get used to like the timing and the different uh, tells that each boss has and when you kind of um you know get familiar with these um with these uh, mechanics we kind of have to exponentially make it harder to make it you know fun to 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 have a rematch with these bosses okay so uh, since we spoke at PAX West 2023 and did the quick uh, video at the time, which a lot of people seem to have a lot of interest in on, on our end, um, since then you found a publishing partner in Joystick Ventures. So congratulations. Uh, I was wondering, has this impacted the game development in any way? Has it sped up or slowed down your schedule? Have, did you have to make some changes to your original idea because of, uh, you know, there may be their experience in what works as a game? Does it have any effect or did it just make your job easier now uh, to develop the game further? Yeah, I mean, it, the, it definitely gives us um, more tools in our arsenal um, to kind of, uh, you know, it's uh, without uh, any kind of budgets, we have to do it like anything we want to see happen in the game, we have to do ourselves like we have to um, do that all by ourselves, but with a budget. Now we can, you know, as long as we can define specific things, it's very easy for us to kind of, um, um, you know, get more content into the game. Um, but yeah, it obviously also comes with um, the, its its own, you know, kind of challenges when you work with uh, another partner. Because, um, well, there's uh, it's it's no longer, you know, just oh, I want to do this cool thing, let's do it. It's like oh, this is a cool thing, okay, we have to pitch it to this guy and we have to, you know, talk about everything and make sure everyone's on board. But yeah, it's, um, uh, it's, it's been very nice so far, so I, I, I hope we can uh, uh, finish the game and count the results will speak for itself. 
Okay, it sounds a little bit led that way. It also keeps you honest that you don't too much veer off to a certain way or at uh, what I like to refer to as feature creep into a game. And it sounds like having a partner like that can kind of balance that out. So your, your creative process gets reined in a little bit to stay focused on the task at hand. Is, is that a right in the, my assumption? Yeah, um, it's, it's a very dangerous thing to kind of feature creep your game, especially as like... Uh, this is, uh, you know, Supermasters, the, the the developer studio's first game. And not just our first game, but like our first project ever, so to say. So there's been a lot of mistakes that we've done for the first time. And we've, we've, we've uh, become, you know, infinitely more uh, wise after this uh, project. But... Um, yeah, one thing that uh, that we're very careful with is, you know, if we have a good idea, maybe we can save that for, you know, uh, a DLC or a sequel or whatever, you know, like that. And, you know, not kind of trying to, to squeeze in so big, big boy boxing becomes the, you know, like the ultimate game with all the game modes, with all the everything and all our ideas. Um, we, we, we actually have like so many characters, like, the big thing in our games is, you know, the characters. And um, yeah, I think we have about... Um, if we have the time, we could like implement 100, 150 characters. But um, that's way too much to animate. <laughs> so so uh, is there anything you share one of the lessons that you have learned by developing this? You said it was your first project, your first game. So you start working together and, and I'm not sure how big your team is right now. But is there an example you can you can give us on what you learned? Like, if you had to do it again now, you would do that a different way. Something from the beginning of your development, for instance. Well, um, I think this uh, we're we're going to do a, a lot of things different, and we have to adapt a lot during the process. But um, yeah, there's uh, a lot of lessons to learn. But uh, one of the kind of ones that was uh, kind of uh, like we would definitely have won a lot of time in if we had known this was just uh, the amount of time it takes to kind of do everything that's not game developed if that makes sense um all the 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 the, the managing and the scheduling and talking with the you know the business part and you know Kind of the company part and uh, what's it called? Book voting, it's called uh, accounting, um, yeah, tax stuff, you know, but also like team building and these stuff that, you know, kind of has to do with development. But um, yeah, it's not really like, you know, actual like, you know, writing code or drawing animations, like just managing a team that's, uh, that's a craft in it of itself. Yeah, it's not just simple sitting down and start coding. You have to definitely manage everything else around it. I can see how that can be a big challenge. And I can also see how having now a publisher can help you with a lot of that as well. Um, you know, again, they have that expertise. So the, the project started. When did the project start? When did you start coding this uh, or the idea of the game and then starting to code it and test it and see if it was a thing you could further develop? Yeah, so I think the we started like the absolute first kind of um code it it depends on how how far back you want me to to take this but i'll take it uh, all the way back to be in depth so i think the idea kind of it, it all actually started not as a punch-up game or even a boss rush game or even you know, a boxing game like it started as a super smash bros type platform fighter because it was like me and my colleague Ludwig were with uh, the two co-founders of uh, of the company and we we just you know brainstormed these crazy wacky characters and that you know we kind of uh, were inspired from you know people like close friends and people in in our vicinity and some of our like heroes so to say and we wanted to like put these characters inside a game. So we were like, oh, we have to make a game that is perfect to showcase characters. And our first idea was, you know, Super Smash Bros type platform fighter. So we kind of um, made that. Um, and 
we had really good progress on that game. We had to learn a lot from scratch, but um, practically we can say we had a finished game. But we saw that even though that we had a finished game, this this was sometime like 2018, 2019, maybe. We were like, oh, if we actually want to sell this game, we're like, you know, sell this to a publisher or something like. We're going to have a hard time because Super Smash Bros type fighters were like quite bloated at the time, like with the um, like a lot of different um, um, in the alternatives to 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 that. And also we, we were like, oh, we, we're going to have to focus a lot on like competitive fairness, balancing. Stuff like that. We don't want to do that. We just want to make wacky characters in wacky situations. So basically, sometime 2020, I think, I pitched to Ludwig, like, oh, let's convert this game, our characters, into, um, like, a Punch-Out! inspired game. Um, and uh, I promised him, like, like, it's going to take us max three months. To finish this, <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, um, and uh, yeah, I had a plan and everything for it. But uh, we started making that. It was a lot of fun. He was on board and like you know, basically reanimating everything in a new perspective. Um, and sometime I think around 2021 and 2022 is when we started like going really full steam ahead with making the game um but yet it's, it, it was a long process like um between that time to kind of you know verify basically that uh, that oh there's that we can find a publisher to fund the game and that there's an audience for the game and that you know just kind of verifying that the idea was uh, was valid and we got a lot of positive feedback from from uh, from our community so yeah and, and then we uh, signed a deal with the joystick so um so yeah so you've come a long way definitely from one concept to a whole different concept and it was between the two of you and do you both do the artwork uh, or is it split does he do the artwork you do the coding or how do you have that uh develop no, Ludwig does uh, does uh, all the animations and uh, and the the art uh, direction, um, and I do the you know character design, the game design, uh, the programming, and and uh, very much like um, what's it called, specialized in our specific fields, so to say. Okay, yeah, I was just wondering because you said you changed from concept from a Super Smash type uh, game to this. Uh, has that uh, drastically changed the art style and direction as well? Because in this game, it's uh, the, the characters are so colorful and so animated that you could easily choose to go more HD like Cuphead was. But you have that, but then also it has a sprite aesthetic to it that looks a little bit blocky as if it's, you know, like it is an 8-bit or 16-bit game from the Nintendo era, you know, in a little bit, but not really, but it still has that feel to it. So has that really changed or were you always in that same art style before as well? It's definitely like still in the same art style region, so to say, at least generally. The big difference is uh, we've um, gradually increased like kind of the canvas size, if that makes sense, like the actually like how big the sprites are. Because we started very small, actually, like it was maybe 20 times 20 sized characters. So that's like far less pixels to animate. And that's that was a big reason just because the less pixels, you know, the easier it was to animate. And we always wanted to have these, you know, fluid 24 frames per second um, um, animations. And um, but we always had that cartoony, vibrant, colorful, wacky design and color to everything and yeah and i guess another big difference we evolved was in punch out in big wave boxing you have the characters facing toward the camera um and in like a super smash world type game is like you see it like a side profile so uh, yeah, it's a bit different in that regard 
Okay, yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, so uh, kind of the style was already there. You just changed the game type around that. But that meant to uh, to increase the uh, sprite sizes. Um, so you spoke a little bit about your inspirations to get to this game. Uh, obviously, you've been gaming for a while, so that led to this inspiration. Can you speak a little bit more about the inspirations of games? And, and was it maybe a reason why you wanted to make this type of game? Was there, uh, is it just to make have fun with a game you like together? Or was it something that you were missing in the game? Or did you really want to pay tribute? Like, can you speak a little bit about the games that inspired you in the past that you loved playing? Yeah, so obviously one of the games I, I I thought what was, um, I would say, massively undervalued by the developers were, you know, was Punch Outs, because uh, especially the Wii game was was a game I thought really deserved to be, you know, to have a sequel to or you know follow up to or you know, even just a re-release on on modern platforms. But uh, there seems uh, to have been no interest for that. So we thought we might as well do it ourselves. Um, and um, and yeah, but I have to say, like um, one of the big reasons for us to kind of choose to do a punch out that game was because we thought we had unique characters that w weren't just you know copies of punch out characters. We obviously looked at the punch out characters to see what people would expect, but we kind of never i don't think a single character was like oh we're gonna take this character and do a parody of him it was just like oh this this character we have in mind this people are going to think it's it's like this character from punch out um and we were like that's cool uh we'll keep that in mind but um we never really needed to um take inspirations for the character designs from punch out instead we took a lot of inspiration from like old school cartoons you know like um looney tunes cartoons and uh, tom and jerry old disney movies um for example the 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 three kids in a trench coat kind of type character we have um there was two big inspirations for that character where like i think i think i have like maybe 20 inspirations written down for him, but the most uh, easy to see ones are maybe, um, number one is Vincent Adultman from Bojack Horseman is, is a very similar character. It's like, I think it's two kids in a trench coat instead of three. Um, and then there's, um, to the old Disney, um, Snow White and the, is it Seven Dwarfs? Um, it's that dance scene where you have that um, the two dwarfs that is like you know dancing with Snow White, and then um, the one on the bottom sneezes, and they all like blow up. <laughs> um, that's also inspiration for the character, and and finally like um, like the penguins from Madagascar have that kind of um, um, let's say energy to them that uh, that the kids in the trench coat have. Yeah, and so one of the differences, obviously, you know, clearly Mike Tyson's punch out and, or a punch out after that, on, like you say, on the Wii, you're going to get comparisons to that. Uh, where it stood out for for me, at least what I've seen, is the fact you have these, uh, at least for some characters, multiple phases that are not just them being faster, but it actually changes in a lot of ways the mechanic and the character changes a lot of ways as well. And so how did you come up with that idea to really make a distinct difference in between each phase of the fight? Yeah, so I just, um, I, I guess, um, the kind of, what's it called, in fight transitions was part of like the original pitch I had to Ludwig, like it was one of the big things like, oh, we got to have these like in fight transitions. And the reason was because, you know, Cuphead, the other inspiration for the game had these like, you know, uh, very long fights with like, you know, transition between different um different faces basically and i just thought you know that idea would work really well with not only our characters but also in this type of like uh, game because uh at the end of the day like it's a it's like a puzzle action game almost 
Um, like you have to learn the different tells and the different behaviors. Um, and the most fun thing to happen is kind of, oh, something unexpected happens and you have to deal with that. So, so, so the puzzle kind of gets, uh, gets a twist to it. Um, so does that mean that, uh, if, if you play the game, it's just a matter of like this, the old school games, you study the pattern and once you get the pattern done, you just you now need to get your timing right. Or are there a few things where it is still randomized? So now you just have to get your reflexes going. Um, yeah, if, if I understand the question correctly, it's, uh, you can say that um, the kind of twists in the fight kind of, um, you know, make sure that you can't just, you know, follow a simple pattern, um, like in maybe the old games, but more like, oh, in the first phase, you get introduced to a uh to 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 a design a thought process and then in the second phase we we put a twist on it that only kind of makes sense if you already know kind of the lesson from the first phase so that makes it very engaging i think and satisfying to uh, to uh, to engage with the game because at the end of the day it's like the, the way the players engage with the game is is kind of what makes the game unique And has that been challenging to get your your um uh, let me rephrase that has it been challenging to get the timings right so to to really get uh those puzzles across and and the mechanics like like a lot of tweaking uh, have there been a lot of challenges with that or what you envisions worked pretty well from paper straight into uh, into the game generally we we just um realized that we could remove a lot of the ideas and still have it be a fun game like we had like just too many ideas and like uh, it just wasn't necessarily to make everything like sometimes like less amounts of uh, um like for example options that the that the boss has and like less moves less mechanics it could mean in like just a more fun experience so there was like, um, I think in our first draft of uh, Coach Dank, we like we implemented 100% of the animations, 100% of the moves. And then in like the one that was available um, in packs, I think only used about 50 or 40% of those moves and it packs. And we were like, yeah, so this one. We don't need so it, it was a lot of like removing stuff and just making so stuff feels more um like yeah, i guess coherent and iconic like um, we, we we tried to make each boss less like um normalized like oh every boss should have this and this and this no it's like we tried to make it more iconic and more unique by just removing all that you know normal stuff and i think the game got much more fun when we did that yeah, it's like the old saying, sometimes less is more, right? Exactly. And do you feel, what engine are you using? Do you feel it's it's good in response time? Because with a game like this, you're going to have quick, you know, no input lag and things like that. Has that been going well? Oh, yeah. So um, we use Unity game engine, but um, it's very, like, heavily modified. So for for anyone that knows Unity, it's uh, you use uh, the C Sharp programming language. But uh, we've modified it in a way so uh, essentially we only work in the scripting language Lua. Um, and uh, yeah, the big reason for that is just um, easier for designers to implement stuff. They have a far easier time learning Lua than C Sharp. And also, um, I might be going off a little bit off track, but uh, yeah. We're, we're going to have a very extensive and easy to use mod support system. So people and the community can like, oh, if, if they think here we have the too little content, they can, you know, make their own boss and make their own new player or stage or even circuits, you know? Yeah, that's actually great. Uh, that was a spoil a little bit uh, to me on, on the show floor this uh, past week, uh, talking to, uh, I believe it was Ivan I was talking to, 
you mentioned that you want to have mod support by the community, which is really, really great. It's going to be a separate thing to download and use, or it's going to be part in the game where you switch over. And then the other follow-up question is, what you, what would you hope and see that the community will do it? Would do mm. with that? Yeah. So really, you don't really need to download anything externally, but obviously, some of the you know you will have a hard time to you know, for example, edit or create new behaviors if you don't have like a you know text editor. And, and like um, uh, we use a program called Aceprite to do all the the, the animations and uh, pixel art. So we definitely recommend anyone that mods to be familiar with that program. But other than that, like they don't need to like download like a separate uh, mod version or something like that. It's 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 all like part of the um, the the like core engine. And that also means that whatever mod you make will be, um, will 99% be work on, you know, all consoles, all platforms. So, you, so the mod can work on a Nintendo Switch, for example. Um, and uh, yeah, that would be very cool. Um, the other part of the question, like um, what I hope the community would, uh, would make with this is, obviously it would be fun to see some meme fights where like you have this uh, very uh like uh, comedic type of fights but obviously like the real type of com like the things that try to feel vanilla you know like um, try to feel like they e emulate the art style of the game they emulate the animation style of the game they emulate the kind of general game design language of the game and make like like a new content that would be like super cool <laughs> To see. Very nice. Uh, the other thing he mentioned too was having uh, maybe cross indie, you know, indie characters from other games. Obviously, from from um, Joystick Ventures themselves, but maybe beyond that, having crossovers between indie titles into your game as well. That sounds pretty interesting. Is there any characters that you would hope to see uh, in your game? Would you like to have a a Cuphead character for instance? Oh, that would be game? awesome. Um, that would be absolutely awesome. I I think the um. The character I personally would love to see the most, or let's say the the three, like just personally that I I I, I like to see the most would be um, um I think number one would be like a punch out character, like I don't know King Hippo or something. But uh, yeah, I don't think that's uh, that's really a possibility because it's owned by Nintendo, but. Um, then it would be really cool to, to see like some indie characters like uh, Pepino or Anton from Anton Blast, uh, uh, maybe Super Meat Boy or Binding of Isaac. It's, it's it has nothing to do with kind of the art style of our game, but it's uh, games that I've I really liked um, um, when I was young. So I guess all those type of games like Hades also is a more recent game, but uh, super fun. All right, that sounds really like a great, great thing and an opportunity to potentially have. So, uh, and then again, original characters from people that are aspiring to be good, you know, game makers or are good at modding, they can make the game in different ways as well. And the other plans that you are uh, hoping for to expand on the game, uh, leaderboards, tournaments, you already mentioned DLC because you have over 100 plus characters. Uh, what do you see in the future of that? Yeah, there's obviously like different game modes we, we have in mind, like very actually detailed plans of like other game modes guys because the the core concept loop of like uh, the story mode is as as it is now is like you know you have, you have these uh, tournaments you be uh, i won't say how many tournaments we, we have but you have this you know group of bosses you can tackle in a different order and everything and um, um when you beat the bosses you can rematch them like um for for to complete challenges and when you do these these stuff you can um earn reward points and with those you can like unlock new abilities new strides new basically upgrades to your character you can also like um, um unlock new abilities which um you know could drastically change how you would tackle a previous one boss so to say so we always try to um, um, 
make it fun to replay the fights you've already won um, by, you know, rewarding the players and giving players new new abilities, new stuff. And we have a lot of these strides and abilities, we call them. So the strides are basically these passive upgrades and abilities are the active um, swappable upgrades. Um, and we have a lot of these. But one thing we wished to kind of make at, at one time in development was like a roguelike mode uh, where you could uh, basically uh, choose these, uh, you know, be between fights you could upgrade your abilities and strides and swap these. But um, yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, it's still in like an idea phase, so um, I think uh, I think we can't really expect to see something like that at launch. Maybe after launch. We'll see. All right, so plenty of, plenty of options still there, or maybe even a big boy boxing too at that point. Uh, any plans for couch PvP or couch co-op or things like that? It's a bit yeah, of strange that, games, but do you have any yeah, ideas so, for that? Um, one of the things we really wanted to do at an early stage was like, oh, let's Let's make it so, like, because yeah, Punch It, we have had an interesting but very maybe lacking versus mode. Because um, you had no character selection, everyone, both players played as as, as Mac and kind of just threw Punch It uh, at, at each other. It was an interesting concept, but I think uh, for that idea to work, you have to have a roster of characters. And obviously, because the game started as a Super Smash Bros. type game, we we we, we really wanted that at, at an early stage. Unfortunately, we we, had, we realized you know that basically making this mode would just be like we had to create a lot of assets because practically we had to draw all the bosses from two perspectives, um, and also we'd go back to that problem where. We had to look at competitive fairness. We have to, to, you know, look at all that, and we're like, mm, this also feels like mm, maybe a different game. Or mm, if there's enough um, people wanting it, they can. I've actually made it possible for people to mod this in. Like uh, they can just, uh, um, even though it's a single player game, this in the back end you can activate a a, a two player mode. So if the community wants it, they can. Uh, they can make it themselves, and if they don't do that, then I won't do it. Maybe we'll do it in the future. So there, there's an even more modding opportunity right there. Yeah. That's, that's really great. Um, so there will be a new demo, I heard, on the upcoming Steam Next Fest. What can people look for in this yeah, new I, demo? I think it's uh, it's going to be a very exciting demo for people to, to try, because... Um, there will be, I think, one of the big parts of the game that we haven't really um, put a spotlight on yet is this, you know, ability system and this stride system, because this really puts like another layer on top of the punch out formula with, you know, basically the strategy and variety in how you interact. And this is something that will put a big spotlight on in the new demo, as well as like a well, for me, it's like something we've, we've worked on for a long time now, but for anyone like following the game, they're, they're going to see, wow, they've reworked all the animations and art to be even more impressive than than the previous version. And uh, um, yeah, we put a lot of effort into making that uh, a reality, so I hope people will uh, en enjoy that. I'd expect a, a definitely a big jump in, in progression there. And the game, I believe, is expected out this year, later this year, is yeah, this correct? Yeah, sometime this year. Okay, so the demo is the first thing to look for, see all the changes that are upcoming. With all those update, uh, up, upgrades and the, the stride system that you're talking about, will there be some uh, training montages with your coach, Hank, in uh, Punch-Out style, or uh, any other surprises that we need to look out for? <laughs> yeah, so um, there's um, the uh, the absolute first demo we had was um, was an a kind of extended training sequence, you can say, a tutorial training sequence, and 
in this new demo, there might be a follow up to that. Like um, maybe we'll, you know, have 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 that first tutorial, but also like a a follow up to that. Um, maybe as a way to end the demo. We'll we'll see. Oh, looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. Um, and obviously, it's also due to consoles, right? You want to out on the Switch, I believe, and any other consoles? Hopefully, as many consoles as possible, like uh, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Okay, sounds exciting to me. Hopefully, that all will work out uh, in due time. Looking forward to it. Well, thank you very much, Martin, for speaking to me uh, and us about uh, your game. If uh, you know, hopefully, we hear a lot more from you in the future. Keep uh, keep in touch. And we hope it does really well. We're looking forward to the upcoming demo at the uh, at the Steam uh, Next Fest, and uh, and see what kind of characters you chose to put in the game for us. Awesome! Thank you so much.